Bringing an object from the digital world into the physical world is a pretty awesome experience, and seeing it being printed right before your eyes is even more fun. I've had a few items printed from online companies like Shapeways, but I'm excited to get into 3D printing on my own. Monoprice is well known for affordable electronics, and their 3D printer line is definitely on the affordable side. This top of the line, Maker Ultimate, is available for $479. Let's get it set up and see how our first print goes. We're going to go through the setup fairly quickly as it follows along with the manual pretty close, but I'll throw in some tips and some things that I had to troubleshoot along the way. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Hi, this is Jordan with 9to5toys. Obviously, first we unpack the Maker Ultimate. This is pretty straightforward. Once everything is out, here's what you can expect to find in the accessory box. According to the manual, in here you'll find a spool holder, a power cord, print bed mats, package of hex wrenches, USB cable, tweezers, a scraper, a card reader, and a micro SD card. This is a little different than what I found in my box. I didn't have a card reader or a micro SD card, but I did have a thumb drive and a regular SD card, along with this tube and this metal piece. To continue setting up the Maker Ultimate, following along with the manual is pretty straightforward even though the image quality is abysmal. There is some minor assembly required. The control knob must be attached using the included hex wrench, and the spool holder must be mounted to the back of the Maker Ultimate. Make sure the power switch is in the off position. You can then turn the Maker Ultimate on. Controlling the menu is very simple, just rotate the knob to move up or down and push it in to select. The next step we need to do is to level the print bed. To get started, use the control knob to select maintenance and then build plate. This will take you through a seven step process to get the plate leveled. And this is where I ran into my first issue. When I tried to initiate the process, the build plate would move, but it made a horrendous sound. The first step of the leveling process is to adjust the build plate to within one millimeter of the nozzle. And I could not adjust it higher with the control knob like it is instructed. I tried manually moving it up and down, turned the Maker Ultimate off and on to reinitiate the process a few times, but it still didn't work. On the LCD screen, it would throw up an error saying Z switch broken and give me a generic URL to try to get support. So I gave the error a quick Google, and sure enough, there is a YouTube video talking about that exact subject. He suggested taking the bottom cover off the Maker Ultimate and checking the cable connections, mainly the one going into the Z motor. I went back down to my printer, loosened the four bolts holding the bottom cover, and sure enough, the cable wasn't fully inserted into the motor. I checked all the other connections to make sure they were fully seated, reassembled the maker, and tried the build plate process again. Thankfully, everything seemed to be operating as it should be. Looking at the bottom plate, it seems like this might be a common issue as there's actually a hole right around the Z motor, which makes checking the connector easy without removing the bottom cover. So back in action, we're ready to level the print bed. The manual and the screen do a great job of explaining how to do that. It's a seven step process with two different phases. The first phase gets the areas close, and then the second phase dials them into a much closer setting. The next step, and a big part of printing in general, is selecting a material. The two most popular picks and a great place to start are ABS and PLA. Both are thermal plastics that become malleable when they are heated up. ABS is an oil-based plastic. Structurally, it's the stronger of the two, but it also has a much more pungent odor when heated for printing, and most people suggest using ventilation to take care of the fumes. If what you're printing is more functional components that will have some stress and wear, you'll probably want ABS. But PLA, on the other hand, is a more natural material made from cornstarch and sugarcane. This gives it a more pleasant, sweeter odor when printing. It has a lower melting point though, so it's not as sturdy as ABS. But for the hobbyist, it's still a great pick. I went with PLA because I am just getting started in 3D printing, and I will mainly be doing figurines and toys for my kids with the occasional DIY project. I also don't have any ventilation in my basement where the printer is, and I don't really want to install any. Installing the filament is pretty straightforward, and just like the manual describes. My only issue here was the filament wasn't properly lined up inside the hole and wasn't being pulled by the feeder. I just had to rotate the material a bit to make sure that the feeder was able to grab the filament. And congrats, your Maker Ultimate is now ready to print. You just need a file. The Maker Ultimate prints off of G-Code files. Monoprice recommends using a program called Cura to prepare prints. In the Maker Ultimate manual, it says the software can be found on the product's webpage, but I could not find it. So I just went to Cura's website and downloaded it from there. Thankfully, it works on most operating systems, so I booted it up on my MacBook Pro. 
So the first thing I did when I got the software installed was to quickly download and import the first model that I wanted to print, Suzanne from Blender, of course. I scaled it up a bit and hit slice, and then put it on the SD card and tried to print it, and it failed miserably. I adjusted some print speeds and bed temperatures, tried it again, and it failed a little less miserably, but still a terrible print. So here's the biggest thing I learned. Be sure that the settings for the print are as close to what's in the manual as possible. I didn't check these close enough before I started my first print, and it definitely showed. The version of Cura shown in the manual looks nothing like the current version. I think a lot of the same functionality is there, but it just looks a bit different, so you need to poke around a bit to find some of the settings. In the manual for the Maker Ultimate, there is a diagram of the settings to set up a printer manually, but since Cura is a different version, it is a little more confusing to set up. First off, you need to make sure that the settings you need to change are visible. So go to Preferences, Settings, and then change the visibility settings. You just want to make sure that the items that are shown in the manual are checked to be visible in Cura. So just go down through the list and check items in Cura that are also in the manual's diagram. With all those settings checked to visible, you can adjust them in the print settings dropdown in the upper right of the viewer. In my experience, print speeds and temperature are the most important things. At least that's what's made the biggest difference in the few prints that I've done. Some of the values in the manual were almost one half of what was set for my first few prints. I think that's a big part of why they failed so terribly. I also needed to set Kira to generate supports because of Suzanne's ears. Once you've set up the print, click the big blue slice button in the lower right of the screen. This is what prepares the file by slicing the model into layers that the Maker Ultimate can print. Once it is finished slicing, there will be some quick info like print time and how much material will be used. If you click on the info icon, you can get some more specific information. And if you set up the cost of the material in the material settings, it will actually tell you how much that print will cost to make, which is pretty cool. There are a couple of ways to get the file to the printer, but Monoprice suggests loading the file onto an SD card and inserting the card into the SD slot in the front of the Maker Ultimate. Make sure the Maker Ultimate is turned off, insert the card, and turn it on. From the main menu, select Print and scroll through the items on the SD card until you find the file you'd like to print. Then just select the file and start the print. The Maker Ultimate will display how much time it estimates is left while the print is going. You can go into the Tune menu and make on-the-fly adjustments, which is a nice feature. The only ones that I really tried playing around with were the printing temperature and the build plate temperature. And then when the print is finished, you want to pry it off the build plate like this, very carefully. Just kidding, they're pretty resilient. I'm sure some prints will need a very delicate hand, but this one did not. And then if you have supports, you want to pick those off to get the print by itself. So there you go. It's still not perfect, but it's much closer than my first print. I'll keep playing around with the settings and we'll continue this printing series with some more tips as we get some more experience with the Maker Ultimate. After I printed my third Suzanne, I kept the same settings and printed this articulated slug from Thingiverse, and it turned out pretty good. So there's a look at how I got my first decent print with the Monoprice Maker Ultimate 3D printer. We're planning on doing a series of videos featuring printing on the Maker Ultimate, so if this is something you're interested in, please let us know in the comments what kind of information would be helpful to include in the next part of the series. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. This is Jordan with 9to5toys. to